One of the most common tasks in maintaining or repairing HVAC systems is refrigerant recovery. Understanding the different recovery methods will help you be more efficient. Plus, when you follow the proper procedures for each of the methods, you'll prevent harm to both you and the equipment while getting the job done right the first time. Before we begin, let's talk briefly about safety. One of the most important aspects of safety and recovery is having the right equipment and understanding which type of refrigerant you're recovering. For example, if you're working with R410A, you're working with significantly higher pressures than if you're working with R22. This means you may need different equipment, equipment made to handle the higher pressures associated with R410A. So, what equipment will you need? First, you'll need a good pair of safety goggles, like these from Yellow Jacket and a good set of gloves to prevent frostbite. Most technicians use a manifold set, like this Yellow Jacket 4-valve Titan with two center utility ports, quarter inch for recovery and 3 8 inch for vacuum, in addition to the blue and red low and high side ports. Make sure the manifold gauges are rated for the refrigerant pressure you're working with. You'll also need a set of hoses. We're using quarter inch Yellow Jacket Plus 2 charging hoses. For best performance, however, we recommend 3 8 inch hoses. It's important to ensure both the hoses and the assemblies are UL recognized. And be sure to check the condition of your hoses prior to use. It's best if you can use the shortest hoses possible for a given job, making for more efficient recovery and reducing the impact on the environment. Obviously, you'll also need a recovery unit, like our Yellow Jacket Recover XLT. This unit is built with all of the features you'll want your recovery unit to have, including a large condenser, oversized fan, compressor protection regulator or CPR valve, and a high pressure cutout switch rated for at least 510 PSI. Some manufacturers offer a subcooling feature, which is an excellent way to increase your rate of recovery in high ambient conditions. Finally, you'll need the appropriate recovery tank. Now, when recovering R410A, you need to use a US DOT 400 recovery tank. Why? Well, a standard DOT 350 will not safely handle the high pressures of R410A. So be sure you have the right tank for the job and that you do not fill it beyond 80% capacity, a DOT regulation. Another DOT regulation requires a recertification of the tank every five years, so be sure to check the date on your tank to see if a recertification is due.